questioned. Everything is going to be questioned and everything is going to tell what it is. Because it's going, everything is going to speak to happen. And the hand is going to be like, yeah, I did this, I did that. My leg is going to start talking. The ears will say, I was listening to this, listening to that. So we need to be careful. Because our bodies will testify against us. Imagine you take that. It's me, I'm protecting myself. When I stand in front of Allah, it's just me and Allah. These are mine. These hands are mine. These legs are mine. These ears are mine. And they'll be the first one to say, I'm confessing my son. Forget about your brother. Forget about your mother. Your own body is going to tell them. So imagine you have no escape. You don't need anybody to see what you're doing. Because you yourself are going to be enough as a witness. Then we have the second one where the Prophet said, uttering the truth in times of satisfaction and anger. Meaning, meaning we're always people who speak the truth no matter what. Whether we're happy or whether we're angry, whether we're right or whether we're wrong. Allah tells us, speak the truth even if it's against yourself. Imagine, most people won't do that. It's a trait that human beings lose quickly. We're quick to make excuses. No, 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 I wasn't doing that because I, oh, I was going to go do that now. You know, right? Ever since we're young, our parents tell us something that 101 excuses. Speak the truth even if it's against yourself. It's better for you and I with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third, moderation at times of poverty and wealth. Moderation with your money. Moderation with your time. Moderation with your food. That balance that we were talking about. Whether you're poor or whether you have wealth. You make sure that whatever you're doing, that Allah Jalla wa Ala is going to be pleasing to you. If Allah blesses you to be a millionaire, alhamdulillah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that he lo Allah loves to see Allah's blessing upon his servant. So no, it's not haram to go buy a nice pair of shoes, to have a nice shirt, to drive a nice car, if you can afford it. But it's haram for a poor guy to now try to drive a Lamborghini he can't afford. He just wanna he wants to be down, he wants to be here, he wants to have that nice car. Oh. So we want to have that balance. The three things that will cause destruction are the desires being followed. The first. Second, stinginess being obeyed. And the last, conceitedness. So we want to make sure that we're people who stay away from our desires. That we're not stingy. Islam is about sharing. Right? Loving one another. Loving for your brother, for your sister, for your parent, for your mother, for your uncle, for your aunt, for your friend. What you love for yourself. These are all tools that we use so that we can Gain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Making sure that we're not conceited. We're not big headed. A lot of people are big headed. Right? You see, you can't find the nerve all day. Wow. Inshallah. <laughs> Spending hours. That's why I don't have hair. <laughs> so I don't have to be in front of the mirror combing. How many I wake up in the morning? I'm good. <laughs> Call me bed, walk out the door. I'm doing that. You got people sit there to get the gel out and get the jelly spike. And it's phenomenal. Looking at themselves and much. This is why we have dua, right? We have a special dua that we make when we look at ourselves in the mirror. So that we don't get big headed with ourselves. So we want to make sure that we're people who we're not conceited. The people who are humble, inshallah ta'ala, because humbleness always brings about love. People will love you. 
more for being humble than a person who's conceited. Nobody likes a conceited person. He may be, may look like he or she's famous, but I guarantee you everybody talks about them. Everybody has something to say about them. Or, or, or people are wishing that you fall off of that so that you are not on that level any longer. And Al Bishr Al Hafi, he said, All kinds of affliction are manifested in desires. And the complete healing, it's opposition to it. So we see that people, when they're afflicted with stuff, is because of their desires. But that the healing for that is to oppose everything that we desire that's against what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the Quran is what? A shifa. A rahmah. The Quran is a healing for mankind. He heals us from our various sicknesses that we have. If we learn to implement it correctly in our lives. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, for those who are patient. Because living this life and living the life of a believer, I didn't say it was easy. Sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes you're alone, all by yourself. Sometimes you're alone, all by yourself. But for the one who's patient, still holding on to that faith, knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to test you, because Allah says in the Quran, do you think you're going to be left alone saying that you believe and you're not going to be tested? No, Allah is going to test you. If you say you're a person of faith, a person of iman, Allah is going to test you. And the stronger your iman, the stronger the test. This is why the scholars, they have the greatest of tests. Right? But if you're patient, you persevere in your patience. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, regarding them, وَجَزَاهُمْ بِمَا صَبَرُوا جَنَّةً وَحَرِيرًا He says, and the reward for what they patiently endured will be a garden in paradise and garments of silk. SubhanAllah. So Allah is telling you, I'm going to test you. But if you pass the test, then Jannah will be yours. And then you'll have fine garments as well to wear in Jannah. So imagine, that's like me telling you if you you give me 25 push-ups now, I'll give you $100. How hard do you do the 25 push-ups? You don't push hard. You hit 20, and you're not going to want to give up. The same thing, Allah is telling us. Be patient. And inshallah, you'll have this. Right? Because that's our problem as human beings, that we're hasty. إِنَّكُمْ مُسْتَعْجِلُونَ Verily, you are people who are hasty. You want that quick fix, that quick satisfaction. This is why people do drugs. It's a quick fix. It's a quick moment of happiness that so they take. But and then the punishment is everlasting. The affliction is everlasting, right? Because even people who satisfy their internal desires with their private parts, sometimes the affliction is a disease that lasts forever. Or that you have to live with for the rest of your life or for most of your life if it doesn't destroy and kill you. A drug addict, he's pleased for that moment and then the affliction sometimes is for the rest of his life, something that he can never get rid of. Or she can never get rid of. So sometimes in those short moments of happiness, 
we have long years of pain. And then we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or prior to meeting Allah, you have the grave. And you have long moments of pain in the grave. Or long years of pain in the grave. And then you meet Allah again. You meet Allah on the day of resurrection. To be put into long years of pain again. For a short moment of satisfaction. And sometimes some of us give up that short moment of satisfaction and Allah gives you eternal bliss. SubhanAllah. Why would you sacrifice eternal bliss for something that's going to be pleasing only for a second, only for a moment? Because the scary part of it is that maybe that satisfaction that we had for that moment, we get it. And at that moment, death hits us. Malakul Maut comes and he takes us. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes sends us to a particular place, to a particular location, and that's where Allah has decided and agreed for you to have your end. So we see. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He tells us فَأَمَّا مَنْ طَغَى وَآثَرَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا إِنَّ الْجَهِيمَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَى فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى Allah tells us so as for he who transgressed and preferred the life of this world, then indeed hellfire will be his refuge. But as for he who feared the position of his Lord and prevented his soul from the unlawful inclination, then indeed paradise will be his refuge. So Allah has given us the key here. He's telling us that if we prefer the life of this world over the hereafter, then what we have is the hellfire to look forward to. May Allah protect us from it. But if we prefer the hereafter and we prevented our desires, then Jannah will be ours. So we see that we want to be people who prevent our souls from following those desires which are not pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we can be from those people whom Allah blesses. As Allah says in another verse, in Surah Fusilat, He says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهَ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا تَتَنَزَّلُوا عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ أَلَا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا he says that verily those who say our Lord is Allah and they remain firm upon that that angels will come down to them saying don't fear and don't grieve and the Mufassirin say that this is in three occasions the first at the time of death when the soul is scared and is holding on to the body, that Allah will send the angel to say, Don't fear and don't grieve. Because they believed in Allah and they remain firm. The second, when they're in the grave, that the angel will sit at a distance and say, Do not fear and do not grieve. And the third, that when they're resurrected on the day of judgment, that the angel will be there waiting, saying, Do not fear and do not grieve. And that the angel will cross them across the Sirat. The Sirat that the Prophet said is as thin as a hair, as sharp as a knife, that has hooks coming from the left and the right, yanking people into the fire of hell. That some believe some people will be given lights, and that those lights for some will turn on and turn off. On and off, on and off. So you'll be able to see 
and then darkness. And you're crossing this path that's as thin as the air. For others, the light is shine bright. And you'll be able to cross the path at lightning speed. But for these believers who don't follow their desires, but they hold firm to Allah believing in Him, the angels will walk them across the path. SubhanAllah. What more can we ask for? Ikhwa, we'll close by saying, remain firm upon your faith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you immensely. For you to be born Muslim is a great favor that you never want to deny. That you never want to take advantage of. Keep focused. Know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching everything that you do. Hearing everything that you say. He knows everything that you think. And that inshaAllah ta'ala if you are patient with those trials and tribulations that you face, those tests, those exams, that you have eternal bliss in paradise. That if you remain firm, inshaAllah, Allah will make you an eye from those who will have the greatest reward. And that's the reward of seeing the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So inshaAllah we'll end there. Subhanakallahu wa bihamdika shalom Allah ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu